I had an idea a while ago. I have seen some videos of Americans showing what a British grocery store or supermarket is like. And I know that I have British subscribers that are curious what an American supermarket looks like. So I thought rather than just do a video of one or the other, wouldn't it be great for me to do a video of both British and American supermarkets and show things that are similar or different. Here's one difference between British and American is that our shopping carts are called shopping carts and not buggies or trolleys or whatever they call them in Britain. Tom Thumb is a somewhat more premium grocery store and in the produce section they like to make everything look like farm fresh like crates of fruits and vegetables fresh from the farm for you. Although I gotta say guys British strawberries and European strawberries are just better. Here's our exotic fruit like dragon fruit and kiwis and coconuts. Here's where we've got the boxed greens, kale, pre-washed stuff, and then the prepared salads. And here's where I just don't think these are anywhere near as good as what I get in Britain. So much better selection for prepared salads. This is just like chef salad, Caesar salad, Southwest salad big bakery section, all these baskets of different types of artisan bread. Interesting, the restaurant brands here like Panera Bread and Cheesecake Factory. I haven't seen that before. And then lots of cakes and these are turnovers, fruit turnovers. It's funny when I did that Greg's bacon and cheese turnover video. We don't really call bacon and cheese things turnovers here. Our turnovers are more those fruit kind. And in the US, we call cinnamon rolls cinnamon rolls and not cinnamon buns. And of course, I'm obsessed with pies and cookies, so I have to show these as well. These pies are in the refrigerated case with branding from a pie shop called Tippins. And here are some really fancy cakes with fruit on top. And cheesecakes leveraging their co-branding with the Philadelphia brand of cream cheese. This is the deli counter with types of meat and cheese you can have sliced for you, as well as an assortment of prepared salads and sides most of which look very unhealthy. <laughs> and then got some southern fried chicken here. And those might look to British people like meat pies, they're chicken pot pie. That's really the most popular kind of pie that we do that has meat in it. Here in the butcher area, with the meat and seafood, we see a fair amount of chicken and lots of beef but not really any lamb, which is a big difference versus the UK. And here is the packed meat area, starting with some sausage. And here is a small selection of plant-based meat alternatives, definitely less than is available in Britain. After yards of more beef, there is a bit of pork and bacon. And finally, some turkey and loads of chicken. Yo Play sub brand called We that they're trying to make very French and put in little glass jars. We've got some Faye. Greek yogurt, milk. These are our refrigerated creams. Half and half. Heavy whipping cream. Heavy whipping cream. And we don't call it squirty cream like they do in Britain. Dairy whipped topping. That's what we call it. Cinnamon roll dough that you can break open and bake, break and bake cookies, Nestle Toll House, Pillsbury, Reese's, Oreo, and also logs of cookie dough that you can slice and bake, and even tubs of cookie dough that you can scoop out and bake. 
have a huge section of barbecue sauces. Here is the ketchup and mustard section, which I will note there is Coleman's mustard here. I definitely need to show the pickle section. So these are all the kinds of pickles we have. And we do have something called gherkins, but it's a very specific type of pickle. It's a very sweet pickle. And to an American, when you say pudding, this is what we think. Pudding. And then it's cousin jello gelatin, which we would never call jelly. And then I just have to show you this. <laughs> Unicorn magic. And here is a couple facings of mincemeat. Something that most Americans do not eat, though we know what it is. Here's the famous American pre-sweetened breakfast cereal of which we have many, many varieties, including lots that I don't think our British and European friends would want to eat, like peanut butter, Cap'n Crunch. And would you even know what this is? Dulce de leche toast crunch. Here's another Texas variation. Churros, chocolate churros. <laughs> and we do have a lot of oatmeal of various kinds and oats and here's grits i know some british people were asking about grits grits are a very smooth consistency corn-based product it can be eaten as a cereal but it can also be savory like this texas variation jalapeno cheddar grits and in this variety pack we have original butter cheddar cheese and bacon next to the oats which we have old fashioned or quick, and then lots of sweet, instant oatmeal varieties here. Here's another type of hot cereal. It's not grits because it's wheat based, but it's called cream of wheat. It's another really creamy, smooth, malto meal, same thing, type of hot cereal that I don't think I've seen in Britain. And then here's the fancy steel cut oats, but no, I didn't see anything called porridge. Oreo chocolate sandwich cookies are so popular that we have a million different variations of them. And they're always coming out with new flavors of Oreo cookies, like caramel coconut. And this one, which sounds really awful. Carrot cake, I do love carrot cake, but just now. Chocolate marshmallow. chocolate, peanut butter pie, Oreo thins, so many variations. Chocolate chip cookies, those are just full of preservatives and really nasty tasting. More high-end cookies, Pepperidge Farm, some of them are the farmhouse kind of American variety and then we've got these European sounding ones like Milano's. Verona's, and then some other regional American, Maui, Lexington, Nantucket. And these Lorna Dune cookies are the American attempt at a Scottish shortbread cookie. And the graham crackers are the closest thing we have to a digestive biscuit in a typical American grocery store. Old English spread. No idea why it's called that. It's a sharp cheddar cheese flavored processed cheese which is nasty i guess maybe since it's sharp cheddar that's why it's called old english but i think any respectable english cheesemonger would just be horrified by that and then this is the famous aerosol cheese in a can that is just very american and very disgusting and then this aisle has what i spent 10 years of my life marketing and selling salty snacks a whole aisle both sides so we've got the tortilla chips unflavored which are the tostitos flavored the doritos so ruffles are the ridged potato chips and fritos are the corn chips 
very Texan. If you haven't seen Trent and me having lunch, we had Frito chili pie, so you gotta check out that video in our Texas food tour. And then delicious Cheetos, cheese puffs, and then Lay's, which yes, the logo looks like Walker's because Lay's came up with this Banner Sun logo and it was adopted by all the PepsiCo brands around the world. Yes, we have salt and vinegar Lay's, but it's not that popular of a flavor. The plain Lay's, the classic, and the barbecue, and the sour cream and onion, of which there's only one package left because it's so popular. <laughs> And then we have cheddar and sour cream. Don't really do cheese and onion. That's more of a British thing. Since this is a British comparison, I have to show the tea aisle. We've got a lot of Lipton tea. And in fact, a lot of this down here at the bottom is specifically for iced tea. We also have a lot of green tea and chai tea. Loads of herb tea or herbal tea. And then we do have some Earl Grey, English breakfast, and English tea time for English breakfast. Oh, here we go. Irish breakfast. No Yorkshire tea, no PG tips. And then this is the biggest brand of herbal tea here is uh, Celestial Seasonings. Tea had about half of an aisle because Americans drink more coffee. Coffee has its whole aisle. All the beans and the little automatic coffee machine cups, ground coffee and instant coffee, chocolate milk mixes and hot cocoa mixes. So the biggest hot cocoa brands our Swiss Miss and Nestle. We do have Ovaltine. And then this malted milk mix, which is definitely a British thing. I think most Americans probably don't even know this is in the grocery store. Peanut butter. These are the good kinds of peanut butter. Skippy, Peter Pan, and Jif. These are the big brands. And then in the last several years, cookie butter has really caught on here in the U.S., which is just those mashed up Biscoff cookies, very European. Also, Nutella representing here. And then let's talk about jam. So we've got preserves, fruit spread, jam, jelly, the really nasty stuff is in plastic squeezable bottles. This is the candy aisle, which would have both chocolate and non-chocolate candy, and a lot of M&Ms, so many kinds of M&M variations, peanut, peanut butter, caramel, almond, fudge brownie, pretzel, dark chocolate. And here's our version of Galaxy is Dove milk chocolate. We have a taste test video for that on the channel. Don't miss that. Then here's the quote unquote Cadbury, which is really just Hershey's chocolate that they put the Cadbury brand name on and it does not taste the same. I have taste test videos where we try them side by side, the Cadbury fruit and nut, US versus UK. I have to show this to my Yorkshire friends, York peppermint patties. Those are actually pretty delicious. Dark chocolate over a minty white filling. I haven't tried fries chocolate, but maybe it's similar to that. I'll have to try that this summer. I was telling you before about us and meat pies, really chicken pot pies where it's at, but look at this, Marie Callender's. I haven't seen this before. They do have shepherd's pie. Oh my goodness, it's beef shepherd's pie. Write your letters to Marie Callender's and tell them that it's not 
shepherd's pie that's beef. Oh my goodness, chicken and bacon shepherd's pie. Never seen that before. Ooh, we've got a little British pub style steak and ale pie. Never seen that before either. Here we go. I finally found some chicken tikka masala in the frozen food section. It's the Safeway store brand signature select. Another type of chicken tikka masala. Sukis. Finally found the chicken tikka masala section. Saffron Road also. So, And here we have our fake whipped cream, whipped topping, cool whip in the frozen food section. Loads of dessert pies from pumpkin to lemon to chocolate to all the fruit pies. And then apple crisp, which is what we usually have instead of crumble. Breakfast sandwiches on English muffin. And then there's just seriously like 50 feet of ice cream. So many kinds of ice cream. Have to show you the local favorite here in Texas. Bluebell. All Texans are pretty partial to Bluebell ice cream. I remember when the Magnum ice cream bars came over from Europe. I think they're British. I can't remember. Someone tell me. Hello and welcome back to another food shopping comparison. Today I will be comparing one of the more posh supermarkets in Britain, specifically Cheltenham, Waitrose. So let's go have a little look around the store. Starting off with the produce section. Just like in Asda, the produce is merchandised in crates, which I think makes a lot of sense in terms of inventory and restocking. I've said it before and I'll say it again. I do love buying produce in Britain more than the US and specifically berries. They're just better quality and less expensive. My one criticism of Waitrose is that they really should not be putting all these bananas in plastic bags. It is just a waste of plastic. This is one thing that I don't think I've ever seen in the U.S., but I see it all the time here in restaurants and at the supermarket is Tender Stream Broccoli. So uh, this is kind of interesting to me. In the U.S., baby carrots are quite often big size carrots that have just been ground down into a small size and bleached. But um, here, the baby carrots are clearly young carrots. And there's also baby courgettes, little zucchini, and baby corn. Lots of baby stuff. I have never seen this before. Baby cauliflower. What a good idea. So as I mentioned in my Asda video, I do want baby kale and I've never found it in Britain. So even here at Waitrose where they have all these baby vegetables, only mature kale. We'll see if next year they come up with some baby kale in Britain. Okay, this is an incredibly good idea. The produce bags are not plastic bags that are hard to recycle. They are compostable bags that you can put in your food waste recycling bins. Awesome idea. There's a really nice selection of fresh vegetables that are prepped and ready to cook. And there's something you wouldn't see in the US, carrot, sweet, and potato mash. And I am not posh enough to know what Parmentier potatoes are. This looks really high quality and really expensive. looks really yummy. There's all these pre-cooked prawns, prawn cocktail sauce, and marinated prawns, and then this is some really fancy stuff. Scottish smoked salmon terrine slices. 
and salmon mousses. Yeah, I've never seen this before. Shout out to the Hereford Beef. There's a nice looking section of minced beef, as we call it here, as well as other cuts of beef. Yummy, if you're too lazy to make your own. But you really should watch my Yorkshire pudding in Yorkshire video so that you are inspired to make your own. And here is the lamb section, which you would not see in the States, and you certainly would not see so many different types of lamb from Welsh lamb, leg shanks, and half leg, and trimmed boneless leg, lamb shoulders, lamb chops. Of course, there is a big selection of bacon where we have back bacon, streaky bacon, which is more similar to American bacon. Streaky bacon rashers. Looks delicious. And back bacon rashers, which is more traditional British bacon. And then loads and loads of sausages. Don't worry, I sanitized my hands right before coming in here, so I'm not putting my germs on things. Chorizo sausages. In the U.S., milk is always behind doors, so this is interesting. They have refrigerated cases, but they're all open. And the milk is in skinnier bottles, even the really big bottles, because they fit in British refrigerator doors better that way. In the butter section, there just appears to be more spreadable margarine than solid butter. There's a little bit of butter, including my favorite Kerrygold butter and some Guernsey butter, which I haven't seen before. That looks delicious. This yogurt looks good. Um, I buy this Bon Maman jam both in the US and the UK, but I haven't seen the yogurt before, and that looks delicious. My favorite thing about buying Greek yogurt in Britain is that it's super tasty and cheap, even at Waitrose. I mean, it's just a pound for one of these decent sized containers that is so much less expensive than in the US. Here are some delicious pre-made puddings. We tried this bread and butter one and it was nice. And here's the STP. Be sure to check out my sticky toffee pudding video in the description if you haven't seen it yet. One of my favorite sections, the cream section, where we have clotted cream. Oh, look at this oat cream. I hadn't seen that before. Uh, vanilla custard. Ooh, delicious. Creme fraiche. There's a whole shelf full of creme fraiche. Fromage fraise, something we don't even have in the U.S. A little bit of sour cream, <laughs> just barely any, and we have tons of that in the U.S. And then we get really good stuff. We've got single cream, double cream, my favorite. If you saw my things I love about Britain, I talk about my addiction to crumble with double cream and the need to cut back because double cream leads to double chins. I have to give a shout out to this. Jersey double cream. I didn't see that before. I definitely would have bought that. That looks fantastic. The extra thick double cream, that's the way to go, man. I don't have time to show you all the cheese in this cheese section because this would be a two hour video, but let me just say, this I'm gonna miss. So many kinds of fantastic cheeses that are some of my favorites, like Wookie Hole, Wensleydale, Double Gloss, and they're just inexpensive compared to, I mean, I can get Wensleydale with Cranberry at Kroger a mile away from my house, but it ain't gonna cost this little, I tell you that. It's gonna be way more expensive. So this is one thing that I really applaud Waitress for doing is having an unpacked section. 
where they reduce packaging waste by having a lot of bulk foods, everything from breakfast cereal and pasta and dried fruit and grains and rice to this over here, which I haven't seen anywhere before. Frozen fruit, which they have dark sweet cherries, which have been really hard for me to find. So this is awesome that they have the fruits and vegetables that you can just buy in bulk. Here's the prepared food section of Indian food. And I just have to show some chicken tikka masala. And I hadn't seen this before. This is adorable. It's kids chicken tikka masala. And that's mild. Isn't that sweet? These naan breads look delicious. They even have Peshwari naan, which I have never seen in the U.S., but I love it, so that would be awesome. And here's takeaway Indian, including tikka masala, chicken korma. That looks delicious, which I would wish I would have discovered that earlier in the summer. And there's so much plant-based meat alternatives here, all different brands, which is great. I hope to try more of these next year. And here is the infamous eggs on a shelf, not in a refrigerated case. And feel free to comment in the comment section about this. But what I've heard is that American eggs are washed and that is why we have to have them in the refrigerator because we had this big salmonella risk because we washed our eggs. But I've never seen this before mixed size eggs. I just thought that was hilarious. I also love that they have different chicken breeds here, like Old Cotswold Leg Bar, Burford Browns. And then look how posh this is, a traditional breed collection. So we have an assortment of eggs. That egg right there looks a little blue. That's kind of interesting. And then it shows you the picture of the chickens on the side. That is so awesome. Quail eggs. Never seen that in my supermarket in the U.S. So shelf staple milk is definitely a bigger thing here in Britain and Europe than it is in the U.S. And then this packaging is just kind of funny. I don't really get it, but it's amusing. And this surprises me. We have an entire aisle of coffee and I was expecting the tea section to be bigger than the coffee section but it's not. Over here we have the fruit and herbal teas. And here we have the black teas and it's really a pretty small section. So what's happening here? Are Brits drinking less tea and more coffee? Cause this is just not very many kinds of tea. Oh, I've never seen that before. Tea for hard water. Yorkshire tea, PG tips, Tetley, Twinings. So like in Asda, the frosted cakes is very few and they are not in the refrigerated case, which I think is strange, but boy, these look good. That millionaire cake and then, okay guys, you're not gonna believe it. Look at it. It's a hedgehog cake. How cute is that? Oh, if only I were staying here till my birthday. Please tell me in the comments, my British friends, the story of Colin the Caterpillar, because I know it's a thing. And where did Colin the Caterpillar originate? Because apparently other stores can't call it Colin, which is why this one is Cecil the Caterpillar. And here is the biscuit section which is mostly digestives. <laughs> and just a couple little Oreos at the bottom. Oreos are like a huge thing in the US in comparison. Here's the sticky toffee pudding one. I really wanna buy it, but Ian will be cross if I do because we're about to leave. These are my favorite. VIBs. If you haven't seen our taste test of the chocolate biscuits, including VIBs, 
please check that out. I will leave a link in the description. The crisps, we have the Walkers, which are like Lay's in the US, McCoy's, which are like Ruffles or Wavy Lay's. Then we've got Kettle Chips here, which is the one brand that we also have in the US. Hula Hoops, which are definitely a British thing and Monster Munch which is also very British. I've never tried it. I have no desire to eat something that is pickled onion flavor. There's no way I'm gonna like that. It's not nacho cheese, it's tangy cheese. And sun chips here are called sun bites. That's the first time I'm seeing that. Once again, I've got to give a shout out to my favorite potato crisps from Hereford, Tyrell's chips, which just have Really funny packaging. I always love the lady here on the uh, mature cheddar and chive. But I think the prawn cocktail, I think the prawn cocktail is my favorite packaging. The posh prawn cocktail. And oh my heavens, I haven't seen this before. They have naked crisps and how scandalous. They have naked people on it. Licorice is like Marmite. You either love it or hate it. Speaking of which, I don't think Waitrose shoppers love Marmite because it is shoved down here on the very bottom shelf, which is where you put things that don't sell well. <laughs> Waitrose shoppers are more excited about the jam and the honey, including this fancy one with a big old hunk of honeycomb in it. Here is the creamed honey or set honey, which is really so much less expensive than the honey we buy in the States and we can't even get set honey. We have this brand in the U.S. but I've never seen the compotes. That looks really interesting and delicious and rhubarb. Ooh, I would love that. Okay, I'll be honest. I don't even know what conserve is. Can someone explain that to me? Damson plum conserve. Yep, I think that's very British also. Here's the little peanut butter section stuff I do not eat when I'm here. I just wait till I'm back in the U.S. to get my peanut butter fix. And here we go. This nasty thing. I'm just shaking my head. I've never seen this before. It's from Kellogg's Crunchy Nut Corn Flakes cereal. There's a peanut butter. I guess it's just like a, a honey peanut butter. And here we are with the baked beans including the little snap pots for small portions and the small cans and the regular cans. And here's the sauce section with Britain's favorite Nando's sauces. And then some things we see in the US, definitely in Texas, Cholula is a big deal. And then the Frank's Red Hot sauce and lots of tomato ketchup, salad cream, which we do not have in the US at all. We just have mayonnaise and salad dressing, which is a bit different. We've got HP sauce down here, and I need to talk to you about HP sauce because I have been requesting HP sauce at restaurants or fast food places and I've had all these people look at me like they don't know what I'm talking about and then they say, oh, you mean brown sauce. Why do people not know what I'm talking about and correct me and tell me I need to say brown sauce? Please explain. And this is actually what I will be taking back home with me to Texas. Bisto, I'm taking chicken and beef flavor so that I can make gravies when I get back to Texas. Okay, let's talk about pickles. Here in Britain, there's all kinds of pickled onions, which is not really a thing in the US. Not popular, but there's all different kinds here. And then here are the gherkins and burger gherkins, which isn't, we would just call them pickles or maybe chips. Hymesia cucumbers. No idea what that is, but they look like dill pickles. Tell me. Stay tuned next Friday for my video comparing food shopping at Asda and Walmart. Thanks so much for watching and do something good in the world today.